See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is being offered for your intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved, Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Inverted pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh abolished the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God. 
in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all that had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, my friends. I hope you had a wonderful week, and I hope your summer is going very well also. Uh, it seems to be going quickly. Uh, in our gospel today, we have this incredible scene, like I was talking about last week. I mean, these are scenes I can understand as one who's been through the seminary. Uh, and last week we had the apostles going out two by two to see what they've learned from Jesus and, and how they do in actually putting into practice and bringing uh, the good news to the people in the surrounding villages. But now they're coming back. They're coming back to Christ and they're filled with excitement. You can picture Christ there telling them, calm down, you know, as they're recounting all the things that they did in his name. You know, the healings, the practices, the teaching, the, you know, the reception from the people. There's an excitement, and there always is an excitement about it when, you, when you're so filled uh, with fire for the Lord, and then you go out and you, you bring that message, and then you come back, and there's an excitement. There always was in the seminary. We would start talking about our experiences. Oh, I did this. This is what happened to me today. You know, it was an incredible experience. And so we see that with the apostles today. But what we see more importantly, and it's something that I always have to remember, but we all have to remember, is that what we're seeing there is basically the, the cycle of what it means to be a Christian. It's a Christian cycle here. It's subtle, but it's here. Okay, so you sit with the Lord you listen to the Lord, you pray, you get your strength from Christ, and then what's all that for? It's to go out and bring the gospel. So now you're out in the world, you bring the gospel, and when you're finished, what do you have to do? It's time to go back to the Lord, back for that quiet time, back for that silent time, to sit because it allows you to process everything that happened in that second step when you were out there with the people. You know, we're given this message of Christ, not just for ourselves, but to bring it out there. But also we have to remember, and it's not a selfish thing to say, that when we are bringing that message to people, however we choose to do it, you don't have to go onto a street corner and hit everybody over the head. You know, that's not what's asked of you. It's just live the lives that you live. You're, you're wonderful, faithful people. Don't be ashamed of that. Even with all the craziness and the scandal and everything, never be ashamed of your faith in Christ. You know, uh, just never be ashamed of it. Believe me, I, I've had that experience myself. I know what it is where you want to sit on your hands because of everything that goes on at times. Never be ashamed of it. You know, go out and be who you are, the wonderful people who, who bring Christ to the other people just by being who you are. You know, going out into the world and being calm and, you know, obviously being people of prayer. And so, but remember to also continue on that 
when you're done and you're back home, you need quiet time with the Lord, however you can get it. You know, you're not called to be a monk, but you do need that quiet time. Uh, for, for a priest in the archdiocese, we are told every year you have to go on retreat. And so this year I'm hoping to do it in late October. I normally schedule my retreats, but I, I didn't really get one this year but I normally schedule them more towards the fall and in the winter, because quite frankly, um, <laughs> uh, there's always, you know, when you go to a, a retreat house, there's always that um, impulse or whatever to say, hey, what's around here? What can I see? What can I visit? You know, I mean, I've gone into retreats in Massachusetts. I've done retreats in, in Virginia, and I've done retreats in, a lot of areas on the East Coast. I've even gone out to um, Chicago, and that was a phenomenal retreat. I'll never drive it again, but absolutely phenomenal retreat. And, but there's always that, like, let's see what's happening. And when I go with a friend of mine, we both, both of us, we're both priests, we both have that wanderlust. And so we always kind of schedule in uh, we'll visit someplace before we go on retreat or after we go on retreat. We'll schedule an extra day so that we can see something. Like when we did Virginia, we did Gettysburg. You know, Chicago, we visited and stayed at, a, at another place in Chicago after we finished our retreat. So we didn't have that impulse to go out uh, into and, and see what was happening, but to stay at the retreat house and to give that quiet time for the Lord. You know, retreat is... A vacation from everything but you can't make it into a vacation where oh let's see what's going on around us but I uh, also one of the experiences I had on retreat was when I was Archbishop Ryan the only time I could go was during the summer and I took an early retreat and I made the mistake of taking my cell phone I used it for an alarm clock but the problem is the changes came out so the diocese did all their changes and next thing you know, during my retreat, I'm getting calls left and right from guys who are saying, you know, I need help. I lost a priest. I need help here. I need help here. I need help here. I need help here. And the phone just exploded. So it was anything but a retreat. It would just be, it just became me scheduling times, you know, and I would say to them like, well, I'm on retreat right now. Oh, I'm sorry. But do you have your calendar with you? Because I really need the schedule. It's like, okay, okay. You know, but we need that quiet time. We need the quiet time with the Lord. The world is chaotic enough, it's noisy enough. Get some quiet time. Like I said, you have to cycle here. Spend time with the Lord, spend time with the people, come back and spend time with the Lord. Simple cycle, but incredibly powerful when we follow it. If we take away any part of it, it really falls apart. But spend time with the Lord to give you strength to be Christ in the world. God bless you. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We have come together to be present to our Savior in worship. In prayer, we offer our petitions to the Father, that the shepherds of the church will proclaim Christ, admonishing and in teaching with all wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for an end to terrorism in this world and for peaceful resolution to all conflicts between nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual growth of our parish communities, that they will commit themselves to the truth of the gospel with zeal, self-sacrifice, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christian husbands and wives will be blessed and strengthened so that the love of God will be made visible to the world through them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who risk their lives in order to protect the lives of others, especially our military and our first responders, that they may be strengthened, shielded, and aided, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to set aside time to be with the Lord in silence and prayer, and to find rest in the heart of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, that they may find healing, and for those of our loved ones and family members who are deceased, that they are enjoying the bliss of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those souls in purgatory who have no one to pray for them, that our prayers may lift them up to the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, guide us in right paths and give us the courage to face the challenges of life. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial to, of his wonders and gives food to those who fear him. At this time, we offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed and wonderful week, everyone. God bless and safe travels.